simple equation for entrepreneurial success. But in order to do that, I have to tell you a bit about myself. Since I was very young, since I was a kid really, I wanted to know the inner working of things. I wanted to know how everything actually worked. And so, a lot of my toys, I like remote control cars just like this. And it meant that a lot of my toys ended up looking like this. I used to break everything apart. I needed to know how things actually work. And as I grew up, by the ninth grade, I was coding. I had taught myself how to code. And sitting in my bedroom, I was freelancing. I was earning in dollars while working for people around the world. I was coding. I was designing. I was in a world of my own, if you may. And as I kind of grew older and my fascination went from technology to business and kind of the mashup of the two, I started making apps of my own. I tried to solve problems around me and I started making apps. In that journey of making apps, I met someone named Fahim Saleh. Fahim Saleh was an American Bangladeshi entrepreneur. He came to Dhaka in hopes of creating the next generation of business builders. I met him and he told me to come to his office where I met a few more like-minded people who wanted to create something and together for the next, I didn't know it at the time, but for the next seven years, we built and failed at nearly four or five businesses and one of them got to some size. So today I'm going to talk about that one that kind of worked, but I have to acknowledge, ladies and gentlemen, all the failures that the four of us actually had before all of that. Um, but before I get into that, the real question is what or how does someone succeed at business? The real question is wouldn't it be amazing if there was a simple equation for entrepreneurial success. I told you from the very beginning that as a child, I wanted to understand how things work. As an adult, I am still the same. I am absolutely the same. Except now my question is just this. How do some entrepreneurs succeed while others fail? How is it that some entrepreneurs are able to make things work while others can't? How is it that some enterprises become rising successes Others fail. That has been the question that I've been working on for the last years. As I've been building Patao and kind of trying to answer these questions selfishly for myself, but I've come up with my own answer. And today, people of Kuwait, I want to share that answer with you guys. So let's start. At first, I thought, hey, it's all about the idea, right? It has to be a world-changing idea, a magical idea that changes everything. And that idea will determine whether you succeed or you fail. And would you blame me? Because when I saw examples, when I saw that in 1996, the internet was not the same place. It was a disorganized place. It was not a useful tool. It was all over the place. And so it wasn't very useful to any of us. But then what happened was that in 1996, two PhD students came together and they thought, hey, let's organize the world's information. Let's make it so that you and I can search everything on the internet. That eventually became Google. Larry and Sergey are now well known as successful entrepreneurs. But I already told you, I am obsessed with this question. And so I didn't stop there. I looked at a lot more, lot more examples. One of the examples was back in the 1900s, actually, when storytelling, what I'm doing right now, what we do when we visit a cinema hall, when we look at the Avengers, when we look at all these nice movies, what do we do? We, we receive storytelling. But back then, this was the extent of storytelling. This is called stop motion, right? It means you take pictures and then you kind of show the next one and the next one and the next one. And this is how you tell stories. There were no fictional characters. There were no other people being creative, creating a Mickey Mouse or a Donald Duck or anything like that. Until this man came along. His name is Walt Disney. You might have heard of him. And he created, well, he created a bunch of things, but he created these amazing fictional characters 
these animated movies, these Disneyland's entire places where people can go and just live in magic almost. But why even stop there, right? Again, I told you, I've been looking at this and it turns out in the last few hundred years, the most important invention was this one thing. I, I'm actually going to ask you guys, what do you think is the most important invention in the last few hundred years? Be brave. Be brave, quit. I would say it's the computer. Except computers used to be like this. It would take this entire auditorium to house one computer because it was a mainframe. These mainframe computers used to be used for war or for governments only until it became domesticated and it came to every single one of us. And as that happened, as personal computing became a thing, one man thought, hey, a lot of people will use computers. A lot of people will make computers. But do you know what all computers need? They need a system to run it. They need an operating system. And so I'll create the operating system. And so this guy created Microsoft. So long story short, it turns out, as I was listening to all of these entrepreneurs, if, as I was kind of evaluating what it takes to be successful, an idea is very important. But then, and you are all mostly engineering students, so you can relate, I ran into an exception. The exception was all the, were all the people who had great ideas, world-changing ideas, amazing inventions, but did not succeed. They came up with the best of things, the best idea, the best invention. They were smart, their IQ was high, but they failed. Do you know this guy? This guy is Nikola Tesla. The fact that this light is shining on my face right now is because he invented alternate current. He invented hydroelectric power. He invented the radio. And if I were to, so this guy has 300 patents. If I listed down all the things that Nikola Tesla created, it would take up my whole talk. I won't do that. But the point is that he died penniless and without recognition. The impact that he could have was not realized. He had invented so many things. He was wicked smart, but he did not impact as many people as he could. So then the question is, clearly, ideas are not enough. There is something else. It's not just one thing. There are many things. So what else is there? Let's ask Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs is known as one of the greatest entrepreneurs in our generation, or for many generations, really. And there's a story that Steve Jobs in 1975, visited a company called Xerox. Do we know Xerox? Xerox is famous for photocopies and other machines. So Steve Jobs was invited to go visit Xerox and they were showing him around that, hey, Steve, look at all these nice things we've made. Look at this and that and this and that. But one thing caught Steve's eye. He was looking at it, it was a small device that could control what's on your computer screen. He looked at this, there was a light bulb in his head, and he went back to Apple. He went back to Apple and he made sure that every single computer that was shipped right after that had this small device. This device today is known as the mouse. This mouse was not invented by Steve Jobs. It was not invented by Steve Jobs. It was not invented by Steve Jobs, but it was popularized. It was made popular by Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs brought the mouse to billions of people. All of us have used a mouse. But if it were not for Steve Jobs, it might have been in Xerox's park, rotting on a shelf. Ideas are not enough. Xerox came up with the idea. I'm sure some brilliant mind came up with this idea at Xerox but it would not see the light of day if someone had not taken action. So this is one of the points about ideas, guys. A lot of us feel stuck that I need a world-changing idea. I need an original idea. I need an idea that is mine. 
Some would call it an NFT, a non-fungible idea. However, it, I'm here to tell you that ideas can, not, can be not original. They can be unoriginal. Because most creative things, most of the things that we see today are remixes. Someone did it, then someone improved it, and then someone improved it, and then someone improved it. Very little thing, very little things are actually completely original. And if we're being completely honest, nothing is really original because every single thing builds on what came before. It builds and builds and builds and it improves. And we as humanity, we push forward. So I modified my equation just a bit. Instead of just the idea, it's actually idea multiplied by action. And again, this made complete sense to me because of course, if you just have an idea and you don't do anything with it, it is kind of worthless. Guys, every morning, I'm sure a lot of us wake up with a brilliant idea, a world-changing idea. It's just amazing. By noon, we're kind of doubting ourselves. Our motivation is kind of lacking. After lunch, after dinner, by nightfall, we have forgotten our ideas. Uh, this is too hard. I have an assignment. I have a class. I have a job. I have my family. This is too hard. And so we don't take action on our idea. While we're talking about action, let's talk about climate action. In 2000, roughly 2008, 9, 10, climate was the big agenda or the big thing that we needed to act on. And so everyone, almost everyone, wanted to make an electric car. Go green. That's the motto, right? So a lot of electric car companies got started. Two very bright people started an electric company and they wanted to make a very cool electric car. Until now, it was just a science project. It was actually used on a day-to-day -day basis. It was more of a science project. So these guys wanted to go beyond. They wanted to create a nice, cool looking product. However, they failed. Their car ended up looking like this. They could not ship a product. So the founders failed. What happens after that? One of their investors comes in as a CEO of the company. So the founders are gone, more or less, and the uh, investor comes in as the CEO because he still believes in the idea, even though he didn't found it. So from 2008 till this very day, he has been building this company, and we know this company today as Tesla. That's right. Did not. That's right. Elon Musk did not start Tesla. I, I'm, I'm guessing a lot of you might not have known that, but he didn't start it. However, this was not his original idea. However, he is the one who took action. He is the one who made it work. He is the one who's been toiling day and night and for the last 10 years or so saw it through to this day. It's now worth a trillion dollars almost. And so ideas multiplied by action really do go a long way. But why only stay stuck on the global stage? Why not look here? Why not look in Bangladesh? Why not think about Dhaka? If we think about Dhaka, can we think about Dhaka for just a second? I know we're in Kulna right now, but Dhaka has 22 million people. 22 million people. A lot of people in a lot of lot little space. We don't have enough buses. We don't have enough CNGs. The mass public are not that great. And it's very difficult to get moving. In fact, the average speed in Dhaka is six kilometers per hour. We can walk faster than that. If you walk from this auditorium to somewhere else, I guarantee you will walk faster than six kilometers an hour. So it's very slow. And yet, this problem that we don't have a good means of transportation was not addressed for years. Doesn't it seem obvious that a different form of transportation, buses and CNGs, buses and cars and CNGs aren't working, so we need something else. For years, no one looked at it until someone did. And that, and that is when some things changed. The speed started kicking up. A new form of employment, a new form of income also started coming in. And all of this was happening in just not decades, 
not years, months and weeks. Change happens fast. And when change happens, it's breathtaking. But again, if this was, but again, this should have been the end of my talk. I should be done. Ideas multiplied by action, success, goodbye. But unfortunately, there is more. What happens to all the ex except? What happens to all the people who did have an idea, who did take action, but for not long enough? They did not put in the time. Let me ask you. Do you guys know what this is? Do you guys know who these three people are? One of them is Steve Jobs. It's from the movie. But one of them is supposed to be Steve Jobs. The other is Steve Wozniak. The guy in the middle is Ronald Wayne. Apple had three founders, guys, not two. Three founders. Who knew? Probably most people didn't know. But the third founder, after a few months of working on Apple, left. For whatever reason, he left his shares. He sold his shares for $800. Those shares today are probably worth $800 million or billion dollars. And now the question is, what happens when you do the right thing? You take the action, you believe in an idea, but don't stick around. Well, not much. That's the simple answer. Not much happens. Now, while the, while, the, um, while the introductions were happening, they introduced me as someone who studied finance. So let me, uh, let me explain the concept of interest to you. There's two types of interest. One is simple, the other is compounding. When you think about simple interest, it's linear. From day one, you get something, and then it's static, right? It doesn't increase all that much. But compound interest is when things build up. It's when you start slow, almost zero, and then things happen exponentially. This is very similar, guys, to entrepreneurship or starting a When you start a business, it seems hopeless. It seems like nothing's going to happen. It seems like you are stupid and everyone else is smart and that this is going nowhere. However, if you stick around long enough and if you're working on the right thing, maybe, just maybe, you could be on top of that curve. You can have exponential success. You can get to where no one else has gotten before. And so I come back. And so I come back to these three guys. Two of them persisted, one of them failed, and one of them quit, right? So one of them quit and he didn't see any of this success. But it doesn't really stop there. We have the equation now. We have idea multiplied by action multiplied by time. But now, Let's actually think about who did this well. Who took a good idea, did amazing execution, and has been at it for years and years? Let's look at some examples. Who better to start us off than this guy? Can you guys remember the company this is from? I can't hear you. Amazon, yeah. So this is Amazon.com, and that bald, semi-bald guy is at Bezos. Jeff Bezos started more than 20 years ago in this crappy office at a time when he was getting paid hundreds and thousands of dollars and it seemed ludicrous to start a company like this, but he started and many people, many people said Amazon.com would not, that Amazon.com was just going to go bankrupt, that Amazon.com was actually Amazon.bomb. And you too will face this. It's not going to be very welcoming for you. When you start something that is not obvious to a lot of people, they will criticize you, they will joke about you, they will ridicule you, and then they will follow you. So be prepared. However, years and years later, actually 25 to be precise, Amazon is now one of the most valuable companies in the world. But let's not stop at Amazon. Let's not do that, okay? Let's actually look at someone local. This guy is from Kulna. Can you guys name this person? Yes, this guy's name is Aki Juddin, right? And he's from Kulna. Funny story, he ran away when he was very young. He went abroad, he went to uh, India, and then he came back. He had to struggle a lot. A lot of people tried to make sure his business did not succeed. 
again, I don't know him personally, but the thing is, this guy made it work. Sure, he sold tobacco, but a lot of a lot of other people did. Not all of them could make an empire that spanned far beyond what he started with. And why even stop there? Let's look at more local examples. How many of you know this guy? I can't hear you again. Shohak Bhai. If you know this guy, you might have studied at Udhash, which is a coaching center. And since all of you are from engineering backgrounds, maybe, just maybe, you've gone to this coaching center. This guy started a coaching center, guys, and it was not profitable. Not for one year, not for two years, not for three years, but for eight years. Eight years, this guy was not profitable. He graduated from Buet, which meant he had other options. He could have gone abroad. He could have worked for Microsoft. He could have worked for anyone. But he stayed and ran a coaching center. For eight years, he did not see a dime until it worked. Now, he is known for not just a coaching center, but also Rakomari.com, Onnomari, on, Onnorakum Group, and millions of dollars worth of enterprise value. But again, why stop there? You are all engineering students, are you not? Mostly. So why not do some math? Can we do some math to it? Can we? Yes. yes? Okay. Let's do some math. So we have an idea. The idea, let's call it minus one to five. It's a multiplier. Let's make it spicy. When you take action, I give you dollars. Dollars. And so let's say you have an okay idea and a, you know, mota moti action. And finally, we add years and time, okay? So let me just run through this real quick, okay? So you have awful ideas, you have awful execution, you have more than execution, and you have brilliant ideas and brilliant execution, and you have 10 years or even one year, okay? One year gets you zero points. If you do one year, you're zero points. If you work on an awful idea, you get minus one. Those are the rules, okay? Understood? Now. Let's try and score a company. Let's try and score Patao, for example, right? Um, how many of you actually know Patao, by the way? Okay, all of you know Patao, great. Let's try and score Patao, right? Patao, what would you give it for an idea? Would you give it a, would you say it's a brilliant idea, a mota moti idea, what would you say? I would say it's a mota moti idea, because look, Uber existed before us, Airbnb did something before us. So let's call it a mota moti idea. So good? Okay. Now let's look at execution. How much did we work? How much work did we put in? Now I'm probably better pleased to talk about this because I saw it. We worked really hard. We worked really, really, really hard. And so let's call it great execution. Okay. And then how much time has elapsed? So there's five and 10. After I made this, I realized I didn't put a seven years. It's been seven years that we've been doing uh, Batao. However, let's give it a two-year discount. Let's say five years. So that gives us a 10 points. Okay? Do we understand? Okay. So that's 10 multiplied by a million multiplied by 10 again. Roughly, that's $100 million. When we were last valued, it was a hundred million dollars the last time we disclosed this and I'm not trying to teach you science or math this was just an example but this does correlate to your success it correlates for sure but why stop there it's an idea it's action it's time it's an idea it's an action it's time I'm not really proud of just this figure that is a hundred million dollars. I'm actually proud of the fact that we touched 8 million people. The app has been downloaded 8 million times. It is employing 3 lakh people. That means 300,000 delivery men and drivers and riders are earning from the Patao platform, not just in Bangladesh. This is something that I've never talked about or anyone I think has talked about uh, publicly, but Patao is actually doing much better in Nepal than in Bangladesh.
So we started from Dhaka, then we went to Chittagong and Silet, then we went to Kathmandu, now we're in Chitwan, and we plan to expand much more in Nepal. So that's what I'm really proud of. And then all of these things, all of these things are actually made possible by businesses. Who are these businesses, you ask? Well, guys, it's the restaurants and the F-commerce merchants and the e-commerce merchants and the small merchants. All of the people who are doing business either on Pata or with Pata. And so this is what I'm really proud of. But actually, it's not even that. It's the fact that we moved Bangladesh. It's the fact that we inspired a generation of entrepreneurs to show that, yes, it can be done in Bangladesh and that startups can be built from right here. And that's what I'm really proud of. But I want to recap that it is an idea with action over time that is the simple equation for entrepreneurial success. Thank you, Kuwait.